Before we get into the reaction, I just want to quickly say that this video is going to be edited a little choppy uh, due to some really recent awkward copyright that I've been getting on like my streams and some of my videos and stuff. I've had to cut it down a little awkwardly. I've had to like leave certain bits out, but it's still a great reaction nonetheless, and I'm honestly really proud of how this video has turned out, so uh, enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Human Reviews channel. Today, we're, we're doing another classic. I have done so many classics on the channel recently. We've done The Beatles, we've done Stevie Wonder, we've done uh, Fleetwood Mac, and today we're doing, we're doing another one. We are doing another classic. We're doing uh, Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. I have been putting off listening to this album for about two years now. It has been two years since I first had the idea of sitting down, listening to this album front to back, and I have just been putting it off since, and I and I was originally going to be filming a reaction to a Nine Inch Nails album today, but then I was like, you know what? It's time to finally rip the band-aid off and listen to this album. Now, this album is absolutely iconic. This, this, this album, everyone knows this album cover. It's arguably the most iconic al album cover of all time. You can show this cover to anyone, and chances are they will have at least seen it before. Okay, the influence, the size of this album is unlike anything I have covered on this channel before. This is the definition of a classic. But that also means that this is a very dangerous reaction, okay? Because on the one hand, we could get a Bob Dylan situation where I absolutely love this album and people love the video. On the other hand, we could get an Oasis situation where I don't fuck with the album and everyone hates me for it. I am I am very nervous getting into this because I have I have no clue what my feelings on this thing are gonna be. I, I've heard, I know for a fact I've heard time. I've been sent that in on my streams before. I've probably heard money, but besides that, I don't think I've heard any other songs on this album. Maybe Breathe? But, you know, I'm not sure. The only Pink Floyd project I have heard, funnily enough, is wh wh whilst watching Brad Taste listen to it on a live stream, I have heard the Roger Waters redux of this album. And that is the only full Pink Floyd project I have ingested. Which isn't a good thing. I am, I am, I am ashamed of that fact. But we're here to change it today. With that being said, I am just going to get straight into this album. This thing is shockingly short. It is only 10 tracks, 42 minutes. I thought this album was going to be like an hour and a half, but no, it's short as all hell. Track one, speak to me. Can't hear shit. Oh wait, no, there's drums. Okay, starting off with a heartbeat sound. Whoa. Really great transition. Is that SpongeBob Scream? That sounds like SpongeBob Screaming. Listen to this. Sounds like SpongeBob running away from uh, Sandy Cheeks in that one episode where he's like, Texas is dumb, and then she like goes on an absolute rampage. That was an interesting opener. Um, it's, uh, it was like this heartbeat sound with them talking about like being insane and going mad and stuff like that. It's a an interesting way to start the album off. Not the most engaging thing ever, but I it has me interested. And I think that the transition is fantastic. It's like an eight. It's a pretty- it's, it's a pretty solid opener. Give it an 8. Yeah. That's since going to be about a 9. It's a pretty great intro. Right, this beanie is actually gonna hinder my listening experience because it's like blocking my ears. Yeah, look at that. I look atrocious. Next track, Breathe in the Air. It sounds like Spongebob. Okay, so instantly... You can see this album's influence. This sound, this reminds me a lot of um, "Lucky" by Radiohead, with the uh, the guitars in the left channel. It sounds a lot like an effect that was used towards the end of "Lucky." One of the most influential albums of all time, and you can see its influence on my favorite album of all time. Ooh! Oh my God! The first thing I'm picking up on here. The production is, uh, fantastic. This sounds amazing. When did this come out? Was it 1973? 1973, yeah, this sounds uh, immaculate. 
literally immaculate. This is perfection in in terms of production. You you oh bro that bass. Can't tell if I'm hating it or enjoying it. My facial facial expressions confuse you. I'm liking this a lot. Love these vocals. Another Pink Floyd so the Pink Floyd song I've probably been exposed to the most is Comfortably Numb. And I'm 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 very mixed on the vocals on that song. But here, these vocals uh, pretty, pretty incredible, I I can't lie. Okay, it's, it's looking like uh, all the songs are going to transition here, I'm guessing. That was fantastic. When I hear Dark Side of the Moon, when I think of this album's, like, insane reputation, that's the type of sound that comes to mind. That was gorgeous, front to back. That was amazing. In I immaculate production, ridiculously good bass line. Vocals are gorgeous. Like, I I'm not picking up on much in the writing. I'm not paying attention much to the writing right now. But when whenever I was paying attention, even just the individual lines are just interesting statements to the point where it has me actually wanting to dig into the lyrics on further listens. I'm feeling... I'm feeling a 9.8 on that song. And, like, the only reason it doesn't quite reach a 10 for me it's because I wish that song was longer. Two minutes and 49, I it's, it feels like it's just a little too short for that song. I wish it was like above the three minute mark, maybe like three and a half minutes, because I feel like it would have been able to f like fully, fully flesh itself out. But the two and a half minutes, or two minutes and 50 basically, that we got out of that song was incredible. That was uh, an immaculate tone setter. Next track we have On The Run. These electronics have aged very well. This does definitely sound like being on the run from something. Ooh, that low rumble is fantastic. And then it literally ends with the sound of someone running. You know, I was a little worried going into this album, thinking we'd have another Oasis situation where it's like a classic and lots of people love it, and then I just can't stand it. We're not getting that here. Um, Breathe in the Air and On the Run are two immaculate tone setters. They are both incredible, almost like mood pieces for the album that I think perfectly encapsulate the tone and sonic direction the Pink Floyd are taking with this. This sounds so ahead of its time. The electronics are implemented absolutely perfectly. They don't sound awkward, they don't sound outdated. This, this is literally aged perfectly. I don't have any complaints with the sound of this. One thing I will say is I feel like that song was a little long. It had like the inverse effect of Breathe, where I wish Breathe was like three and a half minutes. I feel like On The Run would work better as like a two and a half minute instrumental piece leading into time. On a casual listen, I don't think the length of that song would bother me that much, so it's not going to dock the score all that much. I'm feeling like a, a 9.3 on that on that track. That was... Uh... I'm just hoping the rest of the album can keep up this level of quality. I know time is amazing. Like, they set the bar very high for the rest of this album, those two tracks. And time is incredible too. Next track, Time. I've, I've heard this song before. I've been setting it on streams. The song is amazing. I mean... Forgot about that. It has been a while since I've returned to this song. I don't really remember much about it except for the fact that it is literally amazing. One of my favorite, like, tools in music is space when a band or artist is able to use space well. That's the entire appeal of swans to me, is their ability to use just a massive, ginormous space in their music in a song like um, Bring the Sun, or Apostate, or The Beggar, or The Glowing Man. They just use absolutely ginormous space in their music. And I'm getting the same effect here. That is one of the things that has intrigued me the most about Pink Floyd, is their ability to create giant, massive, like, scope within their music 
just through the recording and the production and the mixing, particularly with the percussive elements, I think that the drums are the biggest indicator of scope on this, and I think it's amazing. Oh, bro, these vocals. I mean, Pink Floyd always have great guitar solos, but like, this is... This is ridiculous. They seem to be talking a lot about like stuff coming behind you, like 10 years being behind you, the sun's coming up behind you again. I think they're doing such a great job of portraying like the desperation to stay young and to not age and to avoid getting older despite the fact that it's literally impossible. I think that that's such an interesting lyrical concept and especially coming after the song On The Run where he's talking here about like running after the sun. There's so many interesting lyrical themes that are being connected even throughout like the different songs here and it is one of the most intriguing parts about the album so far. I think that just the writing is, despite the fact that I'm not fully getting it on all of the songs, I think it's interesting and it's like one of the things that's enticing me the most so far. Is it gonna transition? Yeah, it is. I'm not crazy on the outro of that song. I feel like it does sort of just like dissipate at the end. It sort of just like shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and then there's the transition. I just, that that is my literally the only problem I have with that song is that I think the ending is just a little weak. Besides that, the pacing of that song is fantastic. Best vocal performance on the album so far. Well, the only two songs on the album I've had proper vocal performances so far but it's it the, the singing on that is like up there with the best on any Pink Floyd song I've heard I think that the writing is so interesting it takes such an interesting concept and brings it in the most like intriguing direction possible I don't even know how to put this it, like the way it ties in from track to track I don't think this is a concept album it just has like a through line in terms of lyrical themes and it is so cool yeah besides the uh, the outro of that song not being the strongest I think that was amazing I feel like 9.6 on that track I'm not sure what score I gave it when I first heard it but I imagine it was like Probably around there. Next track, we have a great, the great gig in the sky. Oh, it's this song. I've heard this. Yeah, as soon as those vocals came in, I knew exactly what this was. I don't remember the rest of this song, I literally only remember that bit. The talking at the beginning of the song, again, that ties into the lyrical themes of the previous track. He's talking about not being frightened of dying. Or in the previous track, he was like trying to avoid aging as best he could. I like that we're getting a slower outro. Where I didn't- well, I wasn't crazy on the slower outro on the last song, I think it works a lot better here. Yeah, great transition into money. B says that's the best song on the album. It's- it, I agree, it is the best song so far. That song is legitimately a 10. That was, uh... That was... Insane. I have heard that, uh... A section of that song before. I don't know if I've heard the entire song front to back before, but I've definitely heard pieces of that track before. And I think that the context of it in the album is amazing. It's- it's actually amazing. This- the album seems to be going back and forth between lyric-focused tracks and uh, instrumental tracks. 
and I think that that's really interesting, and it's doing it surprisingly very well, where a lot of the times it would make, I feel like it that would make the album feel very disjointed and incohesive. I think that it actually works to the album's benefit here, because you're getting equal parts, focus on the in incredible lyrical themes, and you are getting moments that focus on the absolutely gorgeous, incredible production and recording of this, and how well the band used space and pacing to create I almost like sonic stories in their own. I think that that song is the best example of that, and it is my favorite song on the album so far. That is a that is a 10. Next track, we have Money. I'm almost certain I've heard Money before. I might not have, but I, I'm pretty sure I have. Yes, I have heard this. That is an iconic bass line. I have, I have definitely heard this. Wasn't expecting a saxophone solo. I'm gonna say something that is gonna upset a lot of people. As of right now, this is my least favorite song so far. I'm. I think that the, it still sounds great, but I feel like just the lyrics up to this point and the vocal performance just aren't doing it for me in the same way a song like Time or Breathe did. I, I feel like this just isn't... It, it, it doesn't have the same impact that those songs have. The, the instrumental's still great though, like that is an iconic bass line and this saxophone sounds incredible. <laughs> Okay, but this switch up, this, this song is picking the hell up going into the back half. Yeah, the second half of this song is, any problems I had at the start are just gone. Interesting time signature switches on this song. It's gone from seven to four twice now. I mean, crazy transition into us and them. I didn't even notice. The first half of that song I thought was good, but I wasn't blown away by it in the same way I was The Great Gig in the Sky or Breathe or Time. The second half of that song was the best this album has been up to this point. The second half of that song was um, absolutely insane. The entire instrumental section, time signature switches from 7 to 4, the insane guitar solo when the, when the saxophone comes in and stuff, it's amazing. If the first half of that song was just a little stronger, I think that'll be my favorite on the album so far, but it's not. So I think it is probably, besides the opening track, my least favorite so far. But it's still incredible and I would give it a flat 9. When the worst song on your album up to this point is getting a flat 9, you're, do you're doing something right, okay? That, that song is still great. And I still probably wouldn't even have that big a problem with the first half on a casual listen. Next track, Us and Them. Saxophone again. Okay. I'm liking the inclusion of it. It sounds amazing. Us, 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 and them, them, them. We're only ordinary men. This song about war. He's saying, Us and them, after all, we're only ordinary men. Me and you. God only knows not what we would choose to do. Is he talking about like killing someone in war? That's what I'm getting from this, at least. We're only ordinary men, that seems like something. That is... Whoa, okay. I don't know if that's really a, a chorus. It kind of is. I'll, say, I'll call it a chorus. The chorus of this song is maybe my favorite moment of this album so far. 
it is just an insane outburst of energy and emotion. I, I, this is clearly about some sort of war. It's like, haven't you heard? It's a battle of words. And then he's like talking to a guy with a gun. It's, bro. Again, the like storytelling on this album is amazing. This is honestly exceeding my expectations, and I already went into this thinking I was gonna like it a good bit. Another incredible transition. Um, that is my favorite song so far. That is... That was all of the best things about this album put into one track. That was, uh, yeah. That song is like, when you think Dark Side of the Moon and the reputation this album has, that is like the first song we've had so far. It's like, yeah, that is that insane level of quality. That was, um... The lyrical storytelling that's seemingly about like s some sort of war and like the moral battle of fighting people the insane push and pull of the ridiculous explosive moments and the quieter softer verses the pacing of that song the recording everything about that is like it's perfect that was that was legitimately perfect that's my favorite song so far that is that is my second 10 of this album. This thing is exceeding my expectations. I went in knowing I would probably enjoy it a good bit, but I didn't think I would enjoy it this much. This is, this is ridiculous. We're already down to the final three. Next track, any color you like. Yeah, again, the implementation of the- implementation? Is that a word? Implementation? I, I don't know if that's a word. The way the electronics are implemented is great. This sounds, again, very ahead of its time, and it's aged wonderfully. I think the electronics are incredible. Like, this doesn't sound like it came out in the 70s at all. the instrumental track so far that was probably my least favorite but that isn't really saying much because it's still fantastic it's still incredibly recorded i think it still adds to the way this album builds as it goes along i think that it's still an important piece of the puzzle it's just not one i, I would return to all that much but still regardless it's uh still solid as all hell give it like a flat nine yeah still amazing regardless Extract brain damage. The lunatic is on the grass. Got to keep the lunas on the path. And if the dam breaks open, many there it is. is. Yeah, there it is. In the beginning of this song, I was like, okay, this sounds good. But it's not anywhere near as engaging as any of the previous songs, and then it just punches you in the face. And it all clicks. Oh, he said the thing. I did, one thing I will say is I wish the guitars weren't so buried. I think the guitars being just a little louder would be great here. This chorus reminds me a lot of Comfortably Numb. Yeah, that chorus reminded me a lot of the chorus on uh, Comfortably Numb. Which I think the chorus on Comfortably Numb is amazing. Uh, one of the best transitions yet into the- into a- into Eclipse. That song started off with me being like, okay, this sounds nice, but it's nowhere near as engaging as anything else on the album so far. 
And then the chorus comes in, and it is one of the best moments on any Pink Floyd song I have heard. The chorus reminds me of the chorus on Comfortably Numb, except arguably better. I think that was... It, that just punched me in the face. I did not see that coming. That was amazing. The, the second verse picked it up a lot as well. I think the second verse was a lot stronger, and that outro was amazing. No clue what the hell was going on in that song lyrically. I mean, I guess I could sort of tie it to the title with brain damage and then someone else living in his head and he's like laughing hysterically and stuff. Don't really know how it ties into the rest of the album, but I kind of don't give a shit because that sounded incredible. That was uh, amazing. 9.2 on that song? It would probably be a 10 if the intro was a little stronger for me, but I'm not going to act like it's docking the score of that song any further than being below a 9. The song just, like, paid the hell up after the first verse. That was still great. We are finally at the end of this album. I mean, I say finally, we're already at the end of this album. I've only been recording for an hour. I thought this was going to be like a two-hour recording, I'm not going to lie. Next track, track 10, final song, Eclipse. Is there, a, like, a popular cover of this song? I, I recognize these lyrics from somewhere, but I've never heard this. Oh, is it- is it the Hans- is it a Hans Zimmer version? Is it this? That's it, it's from the Dune trailer. That's where I know this from. Okay. Alright, I've got it on loop. I, I, let's see if this loops. This is literally the exact same sound the album started off with. Oh no, it fades out. Okay. That was Dark Side of the Moon. Um, firstly, I'm going to talk about that song. That was a, 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 a borderline perfect way to close this album off. I think that that song, it honestly kind of reminded me a little bit of, um... Uh, Finally Peace, off of The Glowing Man. Where it's just this transcendent, euphoric, bright insanely, like, an borderline angelic way to end the album off. It reminded me a lot of, uh, yeah, that song, which is the closer on The Glowing Man. It gave me a lot of the same feelings as that, and I think it is honestly on par with that song in terms of quality. I think that that is a, a legitimately perfect way to close this album off. It is a combination of all of the sounds we have experienced on this album so far. It's, like, put into, like, an under two-minute package, and it's just... The, uh, kind of like the cherry on top of this album. That was incredible. Give that a 9.8, bordering on a 10. I just wish it was a little, honestly, a little longer. And that's the only complaint I have about that song. And that was Dark Side of the Moon. Real quick, I'm going to add up my scores and I'm going to tell you what my overall score on this album is. Sounds about right. I am feeling a 9.4 out of 10 on this album. Uh, yeah, this thing is gorgeous. It is incredible. It is one of the most, ins like, ridiculously well-produced albums of the 70s. It's ahead of its time. It's so well-written. Like, legit, the only problem I have with this thing are a handful of pacing issues here and there. But it's not enough to, like, bring down my enjoyment of this album too much. And I, I think this lives up to the hype. Absolutely. I I'm sad I held off on listening to this album for as long as I have, but I'm also kind of glad I have because I've been able to make a great ass reaction out of this. This has been great. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think of this album down below in the comments. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Our goal is 1,000 subscribers by September. Um, join the Discord. If you would like to interact with me and the community, uh, we talk about movies, games, music over there. So definitely head over there if you're interested. Check out my gaming channel. We started that up again recently. We're doing like funny moments videos and stuff over there. If So, so check that out if you are interested. And besides that, I will see you all whenever I next stream or upload. Bye-bye.